Now, the Obama administration, in its efforts to create jobs, is trying to lure foreign investment to the United States. The White House reportedly wants to attract at least $1 trillion in overseas investments over the next five years. My next guest, though, is looking for investment money to head in another direction, to Italy in particular. Fernando Napolitano is the founder and president and chief executive of the Italian American Business and Investment Initiative. Also joining us, Bob Bauer, managing director and chief global economist at Principal Global Investors. Gentlemen, good to have you with us. Bob Bauer, Thank let you, me Pam. turn to you and Thank ask you. you about a recession in Europe. Do you think that that's what's going to happen? I think it's possible for the European Union to skirt a uh, recession. Uh, numbers are maybe, maybe not as bad as the market was indicating. Italian industrial production, I think, was announced in August up uh, like 4.3 percent. Uh, German exports uh, hit a new record. Uh, the purchasing manager indices, at least in Germany and France, at least uh, continue to show expansion, while uh, uh, Greece and Portugal uh, certainly in a recession. I think of the, the bulk of Europe is going to come through this fairly Decently. Uh, Fernando, you heard what Bob Bauer said about the bulk of Europe coming through the economic crisis. Do you think that Italy represents the possibility of going into a recession? Uh, absolutely not. The uh, Italy is today boasting good numbers, as you said, in industrial production. Uh, the employment is 7.9 uh, percent, which is lower than uh, than France or other regions. I think the exports are going very well, and uh, most importantly, uh, the microeconomic side of Italy, i.e., uh, the Boyan small to medium uh, enterprises, I think, are doing extremely well in terms of export. Let's not forget that Italy has 75 products, number one in world export for 75 billion dollars. So our Italian companies. Companies on sale when it comes to foreign investors wanting to invest their money? Uh, they are open to new uh, capital as we are starting to bring to the United States with this initiative uh, high tech companies which are breathing cutting edge technology in life science, uh, biotech, green tech, ICT, and aeronautics. These companies are eager to uh, uh, unload their strength in the United States, yes. Bob Bauer, where are the companies in Europe going to get the money to expand? Well, uh, there's plenty of money around the world. I mean, in some sense, we're awash with capital. If you look at uh, interest rates just about anywhere, um, the uh, interest rates in the U.S. are very low, so uh, the Fed is trying to interest uh, companies and banks to invest in uh, more risky activities. So there's certainly uh, plenty of capital, I think, around the world to help finance those. So, Bob Bauer, do you think that European policymakers will make good on their promises to backstop European banks? Well, so far, what we've had is kind of an announcement that there will be an announcement. But I think we can't really underestimate the uh, determination of the leadership in Europe to keep things together and work this all out. I mean, what we see today, really, I think, is another chapter in what has been a six-decade uh, uh, book or a process of integration, political, economic, and workforce integration. You know, for uh, 15 centuries prior to 1950, there have been wars all over Europe. And to end that, economic integration seemed to be the, the choice. And it started really in 1951 with the Treaty of Paris, which created with six uh, European countries the uh, uh, European e uh, coal and steel community that started uh, free trade and a few commodities between a few countries. Every few years since then, there's been a broader treaty with more countries, uh, more free trade. And I think over that time is culminating now with the monetary union and a, and a common monetary policy and currency, there have been tremendous benefits for the countries within that monetary union. And as a result, I think the leadership uh, will be very determined to keep the union together and keep the currency a viable one. Fernando, we speak a lot about business uncertainty in the United States. It takes many forms. What about uncertainty when it comes to business people in Italy? Are they concerned about regulation, about the cost of capital, about the various types of bailout programs that are being discussed by the French and the German leaders? Well, there is, there is a lot of attention and concern, of course, on which direction we're heading. But I think as far as the, you know, as Bob was saying, I think Europe is determined to uh, solve the issues. Of course, uh, it, they're not acting with the speed we would like, but get the consensus of 27 different sovereign uh, nations it requires some time. It's probably not the time that we would like as a business people. Uh, in Italy, I think uh, we are looking with optimism and all the actions that have been taken by the government have been decided and will be implemented. I think what is happening in Europe 
Europe worth noticing is a teutonic shift from a social democratic welfare to a more a capitalistic one. This, of course, will be a rocky kind of, uh, of journey, but we're well into it, and the business community is well behind that. Will it mean greater austerity for the people, let's say, of Italy, people who depend on social benefits and the state for their livelihood? Absolutely, yes. The, uh, the package was passed by the Italian government over the period 2011-2014. It's equal to $80 billion, which is, will be front-loaded. So it's uh, about 3 to 4 percent of GDP. But this will unchain those energies which, are, which made Italy famous in the world and in this country. So we wish to uh, promote something which goes beyond the famous four Fs, food, fashion, furniture, and Ferrari. We have high tech, which I think is the great uh, news. Uh, uh, it's uh, what I call a pearl, a gem unknown, vastly unknown. All right, you're going to tell us more about it. Bob Bauer, what about unemployment in Europe? Do you think that that's going to increase? Well, it may a little bit. Uh, it's actually been flat for the last several months, and in Germany it continues to uh, come down. I think uh, if, if you look at the number of people unemployed, that continues to shrink. Even in uh, the U.K., there's been an increase in uh, the number of uh, employed people. I think if Europe can avoid a, a recession or skirt a recession, at least uh, alongside one, I think employment can continue to grow. All right. Bob Bauer, bring in the topic of China for us and their ability to produce goods at costs that, well, make many producers scared. What's the outlook for the Chinese economy? You know, I think that's been true uh, for some years, and it will continue to be true for a while, although costs in China are rising uh, dramatically, uh, particularly wages. I think wages in general are rising at around a 15-plus uh, percent rate. The uh, minimum wage uh, for the last two to three years has gone up 20 to 22 percent in, uh, I think, every one of uh, China's provinces. So their uh, costs of uh, production are increasing significantly. Now, their productivity is growing uh, very fast fast, but that's in part from taking people off the farm and putting them in industry. Now that's uh, slowly going to come to an end because, not to an end, but it will slowly decrease in, uh, in speed. The 16 to 24 year old uh, demographic of population in China is going to peak in the next uh, year or two, so the number of new workers entering the labor force is going to uh, start to uh, shrink. Ultimately that's going to mean increasing costs and easier competition for the rest of the world. Fernando, talk about China and its price competition, particularly when it comes to the textile industry, something that Italy is known for globally. Are local producers in Italy, are they moving some of their production to low-cost regions like China? Well, I think Italy has done a very good job. They're doing exactly both things, as you said. On one end, we've moved and shift production either Eastern Europe or, or Asia. But the other thing that we've done since the introduction of the euro, we have increased our price export by 41 percent. That means that this multimedia enterprise segment has done a marvelous job in repositioning themselves on higher value added chain segments. And I think this is reflected in the fact that still today, if you take production pro capita, we are only second to Germany in the world. At current dollars of 25,000 per head, China is down to five, and we're even greater than Japan. So we have kept this world secret. You know, this multimedia enterprise and the clusters have created created a buoyant technology, and I think the time is ripe, and this is the reason why my initiative is a tagline, one is very provocative, it's why Italy matters to the world, because it really matters. These are companies that will uh, provide a lot of satisfaction to investors now. Is there still a regional divide when it comes to economic development in Italy, northern Italy, industrial, technology-oriented, southern Italy, more agrarian? It is a challenge. It is a challenge, however, we see uh, signs of excellence in the south. For example, in the region of Campania, south of, of Rome, we have one of the most important technology clusters in aerospace, and we just presented a company last May here in New York, and we're going to present more next November 14th here in New York, but 20 high-tech companies, even from the south, and will be your uh, host here at, at Bloomberg on, on November 14th, and it will be showcasing that Italy has different uh, speeds and variety. And as a matter of fact, we also want to be as inspiration to policymakers to make sure that they address uh, policies where the strengths are. And we do have strengths in the economy in the North and in the South. Fernando, what about raising capital, particularly in the United States, for Italian companies, initial public offerings, for example? 
Well, I think that this is uh, exactly the goal that we're saying. It, it, it is a two-way street. Uh, we have always been discussing in Italy about foreign direct investment and attracting them. This has been always an Italo-Italian dialogue. So what well, we break with the tradition, we launched this platform. Number one, today online at panoramaeconomy.com, you finally find a web magazine which is in English by Italy. So somebody, two billion people that read English, they want to know something about Italy today, they have a daily magazine. And number two, I think our benchmark is Israel. Israel, for different reasons, they have to find their exit strategy from their region. And, and guess what? They are the leader in any kind of statistic here in, in listing company in the, in the United States. And I think for us, it's exactly our benchmark. And that's what we're here for. We're also stimulating academic research to investigate the process. And a white paper with Harvard Business School is just out. I co-authored with them. So I think altogether, very good news. Bob Bauer, has Fernando convinced you to invest some money in Italy? Well, he certainly makes a good story, and uh, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to see some of that happen. You know, the, the austerity that you asked about a little bit ago, it, it will be a, a hindrance or a headwind in Italy, but you sure can not overcome it. I mean, if you look at Ireland, Ireland was the second country to have a bailout, and in just the last uh, few months, interest rates on its senior debt have uh, come down by half. Uh, Ireland grew, I think, 7% in the first half of the year. So some of that austerity and restructuring uh, certainly will help the country, and I hope Italy can uh, benefit from it. I know it can. I want to thank you very much, uh, Bob Bauer from Principal Global Investors and Fernando Napolitano from the Italian Investment and, In Investment and Business Initiative.